this video, I'm going to walk you through all of the updated features in ResearchRabbit, and if you're new to ResearchRabbit, how to use it. If you don't know, ResearchRabbit is a place where you can search for research papers and then be able to have ResearchRabbit recommend research papers that you should be reading based on the papers you're searching for. So it's a really awesome tool to be able to understand your field more quickly. And if you're working on understanding your field, don't forget to download my free gift, a 30 day research jumpstart guide. It's there to help you learn your field and be able to understand your field and create research ideas. And that's going to be in a link in the description below. Let's jump into research rabbit. So if you want to get access to Research Rabbit, I will have um, the website in the description below as well, but it is free to use with an institutional email address. So if you have one, you can have access to this completely for free. So this is the basic homepage of Research Rabbit. As you can see, it's really blank. Um, and over on the left is our collections and our um, categories. So what this is allowing us to do is have categories, which is kind of like if you use Zotero, your folders, right? These are the overarching heading. And then you can have multiple collections of papers within them. So in this case, I have mass spectrometry as one of my headings, and I have two different types of things that I did in mass spectrometry in here as well. So I would really recommend that if you want to create uh, categories to have your category be the overall field um, or the, the major technique you're looking into. And then you can have the overall topics being your actual collections here. So steroids and eye mobility is one of my collections and proteomics is another one down here. So if you wanted to create a new one, let's say create a new category. And so it's just going to open this little dialog box and you can call it whatever you want. So I'm going to call this my tutorial category. Basically, this is where I'm going to put collections that I make specifically for tutorials, um, just so that I can keep it kind of separate from the ones I actually use. And then we're just going to press enter and it is going to add this tutorial category down here. So today we're going to make a new collection because um, I want to walk you through how to do all of this. So in our tutorial category, let's create a new collection. And today I'm going to actually walk through mass spectrometry imaging. Um, if you don't know what this is, basically, if you use mass spectrometers, you can actually perform mass spectrometry um, in a specific specific spatial area and then you continue to do that in different spatial areas and then you get an image of basically ions so it's pretty cool um so now it's jumped up here so we have mass spectrometry imaging and if you wanted to move collections between so maybe i didn't have this before and you can literally just drag and drop and it will move it now into this tutorial and i can move it back into mass spectrometry so that's the basics of how to do this so now you're going to work from the left hand side to the right. And obviously there's nothing here now, but as soon as I click on this, it is going to open up and say, would you like to add papers? Cause that's the first thing we're going to have to do, right? It has no idea what I want right now, just based off of the title. I have to add papers in first. So I'm going to click add papers and I'm just going to search the um, title I created mass spectrometry imaging. You can also import a Zotero collection. So in a video later on, I'm going to show you all about Research Rabbit and its connection to Zotero. But if you already had this in Zotero, all you have to do is import it in by clicking that button there. You can also upload your files. So if you have the Bibtex or the RIS for a specific, um, paper that you want to add into this collection, you can add it in there as well. But I'm just going to do search. And just to let you know, right now it is searching PubMed. So that's what this biomedical and life sciences is, is it's going to search PubMed. If I click all subject areas, it will now search semantic scholar. So those are just two different search engines you can use. I'm going to use PubMed. And so now we have a ton of different papers that I can now look and just go ahead and add to a collection. This is going to be your um, authors here, the year, the title, 
the journals here, and then the abstract is here. So this looks like it is a review um, about imaging in cholesterol. So let's add that to the collection. Um, just gonna go through and add a series of ones that's actually related to what I want. And while I'm doing this, I'm just looking at titles right now to see what matches best um, with what I'm looking for. And this is a very broad category. So I'm not doing this specific to a certain type of molecule or to a certain type of disease or anything like that. This is my super broad mass spectrometry imaging category. So you can now see that all the papers I added in are over here. And we can add comments as well if we want to, you know, comment on one of these things. You know, we could say this is a good matrix free paper. And it's gonna re-update and now we can see our comments down below here. So that's one way you can comment if you're interested in doing that. And so you can also, show if you're going to want to see the abstracts in this column and the comments. So I can take the comments off. So now the comment we just added, we can't see anymore. And I can take the abstracts off. So you can toggle these up here. You can also filter. So you can do um, a custom filter or you can filter by first author or recency or citations. So those are all available to you. And so again, this is going to go from left to right. So what we've done now is we can click on any of these papers to see more info about it. So if I click on this, it's going to show me basically the info I saw before. And you can see that it has had um, six citations on it since then. So there's no PDF on this one specifically, so it's going to check for those PDFs as well. So you can see some of this stuff. Now, what this is going to show me here is this is where I can start moving further right. So I can do this based on a single paper or I can do it based on the collection as a whole. So if I do it just based on a single paper, I have a few options here. I can add this to another collection, I can remove it from this collection, and I can select multiple papers as well. So if I selected these, you know, now I have a series of different papers. And this can be really helpful, especially if you have a lot of different types of papers in here, and then you specifically wanted to look at your lipid papers as you're moving from left to right. Then you would just select your lipid papers. So cholesterol is a lipid, let's select that one. Um, here's lipid again. And then I think I had, yeah, there you go, phospholipid. So now I just have lipid papers here. So you can see this one has a PDF. That's what it'll look like when it has a PDF. But these are basically a specific subset of papers within my collection. And so now what I can do is remove these. I could add them to another collection, which means I could create a, a collection in here and say MSI and lipids and add them into that one. So now they're added if I wanted to start out a sub collection from this larger collection. And you can see once I did that, if you look here, you can see MSI and lipids. This is telling me that this paper exists in a separate collection as well. So now what I can do is move from left to right. So to start accessing other types of papers, I can look at similar work. And so this is going to bring out this network over here. So you can see that I have basically, this will usually show the first 50 papers that are related to what I'm looking at. And so you can see already, a lot of these are not particularly specific to lipids, even though I've chosen lipids over here, these might be really similar to what I would get if I had just done this on the collection itself. However, there's probably one of these that is starting to get more specific into lipids. So what this is showing you here is these are networks. So what papers have been cited by or um, were citing other papers within this series? So you can see all of these papers were cited together, which means they're likely 
highly connected in their topics. This is another network over here. And then you have this network down here. So this is probably the largest network going on over here. And you can see these are mainly um, just basic mass spectrometry papers, really. They're not specific in really what they're studying. This one's specifically for cancer research. This one's for phospholipids. And so you can see kind of what this looks like over here as a network analysis. When you come down here, you're seeing this um, specifically, it looks like for lipids. Yeah, these look like they're all specifically for lipids. So this is a different network that's specifically looking at lipids and it looks like some lipid like protein work. And then down here, this one is also looking at lipids as well. And you can see these are a lot older of papers. So these probably are two main lipid networks, but this one's a lot newer. So these ones are coming from the 2000s. These ones are mainly from the 1990s. So these probably papers aren't getting cited as much whenever you're getting into the 2000s. And then you have papers over here that are still related to these papers, but they're not directly have a network that they're being cited. So you can kind of choose which ones you might like in this. So what can we do once we have these papers? So once we have papers, what we can do is add it to this collection. So let's find a paper we'd wanna add. And just to let you know, the green dots here are showing papers in your collection. The blue dots are papers not in your collection. So let's look at this exploratory data analysis in imaging mass spectrometry. That didn't really come up when I was doing this, so we're gonna add that to the collection. And you'll see it will update and um, it's now added into our collection. And so we can continue adding other ones. We can now remove it or add it to another collection as well. And we can keep moving left to right with the similar work um, to see what's similar to this paper. The other thing we can do is look at earlier work. So what was published before these papers? Um, and you can see that these are much more highly networked than just similar work. Uh, and this is because this is based off references, like what was referenced in these earlier papers. And so we can see that these are all very similar. Um, and what you'll find is generally, if you go to the edges, you'll see kind of the differences in what's going on. So this one's about cholesterol. This one uh, is really a review in mass spec. And let's look at what this one is. And this one's lipids. So what's most likely happening is this might be a little bit more of our sterile um, papers. This is probably gonna be most of our lipids and these are gonna be mainly just mass spec imaging papers. And that's how you can use the network analysis. The other thing you can also do is use the timeline analysis. So this is going to show you, these are the papers that were published before, when they were published, and what are the papers published now? So this kind of gives you an idea of when the work was being done within this field. You can also look at last author if you're really looking for the corresponding author, or you can leave it on the first author. So that's earlier work. You can also look at later work. And in this case, there's only um, one new reference here. So what I'm going to do is exit out here and then look at later work. So this is now pulling from the entire collection instead of just those three I selected before. And you can see now you can see this later work going on and you can do the same things before. All you have to do is click one and you can add it to your collection. You can also add multiple here. So all you have to do is click the check marks for multiple, and then you can add these three papers instead. And you can always just exit out to move back to the left. And then the next thing you can do is look at authors. So you can look at specifically these authors and how are they connected together. You can see here, Richard Caprioli has one of the largest mass spec imaging labs. And so this is what you're seeing here is basically his network um, of people who are publishing. So what's likely happened is He's the main one. He also, um, this person has a lab that studied under him. And then this person probably has their own lab that has their own co-authors that are working with them. So this is kind of cool. Julia Laskin also was worked under Richard Caprioli and now um, has her own lab. And so you can kind of see the different groupings of the authors and who's worked together and who hasn't. Then you can also go to suggested authors. 
And so here you can see a wider range. So this is starting to fill in a lot of the gaps. So these are the people that might not necessarily be on these specific papers, but they're likely going to be in the same field as the papers that you're looking at, and they're highly connected to the people who are on these papers. So you can start investigating their papers as well. So you can just click on someone, let's do Jeffrey Spragans, and we can see all of his published work to see if we want to get a better example of what we might wanna be doing. So we could add any of these to our collection as well, just looking through this, and then you can also see his collaborators. This is again going to be a tree of people instead of papers. So then we can exit back to here. And so that's really the basics for how to look through this is basically creating your initial collection and then being able to explore papers or people that are relevant to what you're looking at. The next things you can do is you can export papers. So here is, um, you can export this collection as a bib text, an RIS, or a CSV. And in a video that's going to come out in a couple weeks, I'm actually gonna show you how to export as a CSV and then upload into Notion so that you can manage all these papers within Notion. And you can see that you can also share your collections here. So this was a new feature that was added in just recently where you can make a collection public and you can create a shareable link. So all you have to do is hit copy and then you can come in here and share this. It automatically turned it on to a public collection once I hit shareable link. So this is now a public collection and you can see if you're using this link, you can see the papers in here, but you can't see my other collections. So like here I have all these other collections. You can't see those here. You can only see the specific ones that I um, shared within my link. And so you can also add collaborators so that they can actually um, add papers to this or read it. And so you can add in email addresses. So if you're all working on like a review together, you can dump all of your papers into this research rabbit and work together on it instead of having to like go back and forth between, between places. So overall, that is a beginning introduction into how to use ResearchRabbit. I hope this has been really helpful. If you are already looking and you are like, oh my gosh, that's so many papers to read, I really hope that you will download my 30 day research jumpstart guide that is going to walk you through what papers are actually worth reading and then how to actually generate your own novel research ideas and develop research projects while reading papers when you're first starting to learn your field. That's again completely free and is in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to my next couple videos that are going to be diving even further into ResearchRabbit and how to use it. I hope to see you in those videos.